a director needs to have an idea or has to try to find out, you know, what his style, his or her style is. I know it's very hard when you haven't made any films. Like, what's my style? You know, it's really hard. You develop that over time. With today's technology, you can really practice. You know, you can grab a digital camera and go out there and make, make many shorts before you make your feature film, which I totally recommend. Make something before you jump into the whole feature film thing, okay? But here's the thing. If with film history, you'll be able to find out what style you are. For example, lenses. Lenses sometimes make the director. Are you the kind of director that likes to have long lenses, that shallow depth of field look? Are you the kind of director that likes to have a wide lens kind of look? You know, good example, uh, an action film, for example, has a lot of long lenses in it, you know, in which the actor pops and the background is out of focus, you know. Uh, a lot of other directors, like say, like Stanley Kubrick, has wide lenses. Now remember, wide angles, you have to have a lot of good production design or at least something that's believable, that doesn't look like a set. Now, why is this important? Because emotionally speaking, for the character, it is important. If I'm a person, for example, that is in a very sad moment, okay, the director might want me in focus and the entire background in focus. Right? Maybe. Or maybe the director wants only the audience to only look at me, look at my face. So he might want me, just my face in focus, in the background out. Now, of course, this is a job of the director of photography that you have. But you need to know you are the director. You don't only sit there and say action. You need to tell me what kind of emotion I need to be conveying here. I mean, the director and photography will work with you, but I mean, you're running the show. And this comes directly from the influences. What kind of look do you want? What is your style? So, same deal goes for the aspect ratios. Aspect ratio, basically the, the size of the frame. There are certain films that are shot on a wide panoramic kind of look, right? What is called 240 to 1 or 235 to 1. There's also films shot in a much more conservative kind of view, which will be much more like a square, half square, half rectangle. It's kind of like a rectangular square, the 185 to 1, okay? Now, emotionally speaking, in terms of the storyline, I mean, we're telling two different stories here. For example, if I'm shooting films with lots of, you know, big, tall buildings and tall structures, perhaps the big widescreen frame doesn't really go too well with that because you're talking about a nice, thin rectangle. I mean, it's kind of hard to fit a tall structure there until, unless you pull back, right? But if you want a much more squarish looking image, you might fit them in the frame. So even aspect ratio, it's important to tell the story. Somebody came up to me recently and asked me, you know, how come these older films, especially the epic films, like the David Lean movies and, and things like Ben-Hur, among other things, and uh, how come they look so epic and so big? I think even like a low-budget film like the, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly has this kind of operatic, kind of big, big look, you know? And they asked me, how come, you know, that, you know, how come we don't have that anymore? But it's a different directing style. If you have a wide frame, right? Big, nice, wide frame, right? And you leave it there you leave the shot running for a little longer than usual. You slow the edit kind of tempo down. And you place things really well among that spectrum, that entire big white frame. Things on the left, things on the right. You compose the film really well, which is also your job, director. You know, if you do that and stay there, suddenly the audience has a chance to do this. They can go left and they can look to the right. It's amazing. Suddenly your film became big. Okay, but if you grab your frame, your white frame, and you jump all over the place and steady cam it to death, it looks a little small. Okay, I'm not saying worse. I'm saying it's a different tone. Okay, so in short, a film history and directing style are hugely connected. You need to go to the past to find out in many ways what you like. When you start shooting by yourself, you know, you shoot short films or whatever, you know, you'll discover that it's almost like your brain just picked up a few things, you know, and somehow you, you can make them your own and turn them into what you are.